Welcome to another pen talk. Today we'll be looking at a pen from a well-known German manufacturer. A pen that you could buy now from Goulet Pens. I bought the pen as usual. Uh, it was a phenomenal eBay auction. I got three, a fountain pen, a ballpoint, and a pencil for less than the price of any one of the three. And also, you know, Lamy pens are a great design. I really appreciate their different approach to fountain pens. Um, you know, obviously they're in um, a country that has a lot of great fountain pens, your Mont Blancs, your Pelicans, uh, Caveco, and, and probably more that we don't really know about here uh, when I live in the United States. So before we look at the main attraction, Let's take a look at the accessories. This is the standard packaging. You may recognize it with uh, safaris or all stars or things of that nature. Uh, again, it's uh, it's nice because and I opened the wrong end, but it will come out. There we go. It's efficient. It works. It protects the pen. So you may recognize the look. It's a brushed stainless steel. Uh, they're excellently excellent construction, excellently well made. Uh, the logos um, printed at the top. They may be little scuff marks you see there, but these are used, and that's fine. I consider that patina. I do like to use my writing instruments. Yeah, it's just a push to extract the ballpoint. And it's the same push to extract the thin lead that it has in the standard kind of leads that you have. So we'll keep those uh, up here. And now we'll take a look at the main attraction. Very unique box. That opens up and exposes the pen as it rises up into the box, from the box. As you can see, a very similar design motif to the pen and pencil. And there's the Lamy engraved at the top of the cap. It's just a standard pull-off cap. What's a little bit different about this pen and, and why I was intrigued with purchasing it, it's a 14 karat nib. And um, as you can tell, it probably looks very similar to a Safari nib, and we'll look at that a little bit later. It does post not very deeply and just at the very end, so it makes for a long pen, but certainly not unbalanced at all. It's a light pen. Very easy to hold. I don't mind these ridges at all. It's a little bit thicker than an average pencil would be. So that's the, uh, that's the view. It takes a cartridge or converter. I, I got a converter. It's not the same one as Safari. Lamy has two. You got to make certain you buy the right one. So uh, let's look at the auction and you'll see why I was so interested in getting the pen to add to my collection. And I love sets. I have a few sets and we'll take a look at one of them that is a similar from this manufacturer. And here's um, what it looks like in Goulet pens. and also from Amazon. Purchase it. You can do your own research and do your own looks if you find this pen of interest. Now we'll take a look at how the gold nib writes. I mentioned I like to collect uh, sets, pen sets. So um, besides the fountain pen uh, matching pen or pencil. So here we have the Lamy logo. And you may recognize this pen as the Lamy 2000, but there's also a matching pencil, a matching ballpoint, and this is one that writes in four colors. Depending upon which color is up, when you press down on the top button, that particular color of ink comes out. Very interesting design, very unique. Um, the other thing that's nice is this; these also have, you know, sp spring-loaded clips 
which also the logo has. So it's kind of an interesting commonality. You also notice very clean design. You know, they've referred to the Lamy 2000 as Bajas. I mean, I'm not uh, an art person, but uh, I can certainly um, agree with uh, that statement. If you just take a look at these two from the fountain pen perspective, they're basically the same length. The Lamy 2000 is a few millimeters longer, but nothing significant. You know, they both are pull-off caps, but two completely different nibs. Uh, I'm certain many of you are familiar with uh, the Lamy 2000, so there's, there's no comparison. Also the section here, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're going to do a um, fountain pen comparison. So for this one, we have the Lamy Safari, the uh, Pilot 78 G and an interesting pen, another pen from Pilot, which you'll see in a second why I've added it to this to this group. They're all, you know, there's no real difference in the overall length, no, nothing significant. Um, when we unpost them, some of the uh, differences become a little bit more apparent. And this is the only unscrew cap of the group. So um, the Lamy Safari is obviously the longest one, and the other three are, are pretty much uh, the same length. So let's take a close-up look at, at these nibs. And as you can see, they are very similar. They're probably replaceable. The feed looks the same. So maybe my camera will pick it up, but this 14 karat nib was put on by the original owner. And as you can see, there's some marks as the uh, person who installed this nib may have had some difficulty getting it into place but you could get a gold nib for your Lamy with uh, a logo that I bought like this 78G is a more um, traditional nib not the slip-on kind it also has a unique feed um, similar section thickness but this one has a nice uh, long section so you're position of your hand uh, is not as critical. And then I brought this one in because uh, you may have seen some of my other videos that inexpensive pens have these slip-on nibs. I call them slip-on nibs that kind of push on. So this is one from Pilot. Uh, both of these are fine. Obviously the Pilot one is, is a Japanese super fine. So let's take a look at how this uh, puppy performs. Tough choice on inks, nothing really said put me into the Lamy logo. So pulled out uh, one I haven't done in a review before. I got this ink um, about a year or so ago when I was looking for some interesting blues and it is definitely an interesting blue ink. Uh, to me, Private Reserve uh, can sometimes be a little bit long drawing, but in this fine point, hopefully that won't be a challenge. As you can see, the ink is blue. There's no other way of describing it. Uh, I, I bought the Lamy converter. I'll give you the model number. I don't know off the top of my head to differentiate it from the one that goes into the Safari. Yeah, just a standard draw up some ink. And it drew up a little bit of ink. There we go. I'm not going to fill it. I need to understand this pen. Um, I think from a reviewing perspective, uh, some people like to use a pen for a while before they, they do the review, and I certainly think that that's uh, appropriate. Others like to say, oh, my first impressions, which sometimes may or may not last, but we'll have this one. I'm not going to post it because I don't think it, posting adds much to it, and for some reason I just have a lot of ink on my hands. So um, we're going to experience the first writing uh, together. And we definitely need the plastic guard because it is quite warm and humid where I am. So my first response is it writes like 
Alami Safari only. It's a really, it's a soft nib. Now let's see if we can, you know, these are the horizontal strokes, these are the down strokes. It doesn't really have any real flex to it, even though it feels soft. As you can see, I'm putting about as much pressure on it as I would like, but it is super smooth. It's effortless to write with. I don't know, I have to say that this is a unique writing experience for me. Um, I haven't written with my other Lamis for a while, so um, I may have uh, forgotten the Lamy experience, but it is very, very nice. So I will have to revisit those and take a look at what they're like. So hopefully you found this interesting. So thank you for watching, and may all your writing experiences be pleasurable, and may you have many.